Solaris has an interesting history of releasing updates and then they have very fun exploits in them. And the Overlord update is definitely one of those, because once again, we found one. Yes, that's right, the Imperial Fiefdom has a very interesting exploit that has to do with the Scholarium. Yes, let's dive in and become one, and then we can print infinite alloys. Starting the game, it's relatively straightforward. The Overlord who sits above us on the Iron Throne gives us an option. Do we want to turn into a Bulwark? Do we want to turn into a Prospectorium? Or, for us specifically, would we like to turn into a Scholarium? And in this particular case, we will immediately beeline for the Scholarium because due to some of its inherent modifiers, it essentially means that we can print infinite alloys. Slowly over time, we will transition into the Scholarium. It will take a couple of months, but before you know it, you will be embraced within the magnificence of the Overlord, and then the fun begins. What is important is we need to see what is going on with us as a Scholarium. First of all, we are scientifically literate, which means that we can get a lot of research done very quickly, but that's not why we are here. We are far more interested in the penalties. Yes, naval capacity minus 30%, doesn't really affect us. And finally, the military ship build cost and upkeep cost being increased to 30% has some consequences because this also applies to upgrades. Yes, it does apply to upgrades. Now we have the ship over here and it's a fairly standard corvette. It's very straightforward. It's got guns, it's got shields, the usual. If we take a look at it in our uh, wonderful ship designer, we will see that it would cost us 130 alloys to build. Once again, also due to those penalties, we will have some cost increases there. 30% in this particular case. But what if we strip it dry and end up with this design that has nothing on it? Would normally cost 60 alloys, but that's something we can ignore. We're far more interested in the 130 number here. So if we just remove this from our list and then go to this Corvette that we have built over here, and it's just hanging out next to the uh, space station where it came from, what happens if we go and upgrade it? We will get 160 alloys back. Essentially, we've made a profit of 30 alloys. Yeah, we can literally print alloys by upgrading our ships, and this is where the real fun begins. Whilst enjoying the ability to turn over couch cushions and finding more alloys in the back of our ships is fine, we also have to remember that this scales. Yes, it most definitely does, because 30 alloys per ship is not really going to break the bank. You will be spending way too much time in doing so. However, because you're getting all of these alloys back, it means that for every single ship that you can build, you could probably build another one, and another one, and another one. And this stuff gets out of control rather quickly, because this design that we have, that we can clear now, and we'll strip the hyperdrive off as is tradition, uh, we should probably turn this into uh, a normal version as well. And we upgrade the fleet here, which cost me around, I want to say, 3,000 alloys to build. We go and upgrade it, and we get 8 thousand alloys back yeah this stuff gets rather ridiculous so let's say that we strip off this here fission reactor as well how many are we going to go and get back sir how much is are we going to get back for this here fleet Fourteen thousand alloys <laughs> to downgrade <laughs> a single fleece fleet of 19 corvettes yeah, um, that is a lot of alloys, and I love everything about this because it is completely ridiculous. Because we're getting so many alloys back, it is not even funny. Um, there is a major caveat to this, however, and that this does not necessarily work in reverse. As we downgrade our ships and get essentially infinite alloys in this particular case, you would consider that we may actually want to upgrade our ships back and see if we can continue printing our ships. But that is sadly not the case. If we go back into our fleet design here and we turn this ship back into the old design and we upgrade it now, it would cost us 9,000 alloys, which is just about the same amount as we just spent in order to downgrade all of these ships. So it doesn't really work in the reverse, so that is a bit of a shame. But 
But it does mean, however, that if you need alloys, all you need to do is essentially grab a fleet, downgrade it, and get alloys. I would like to point out that this only works for the Scholarium. The Scholarium has these modifiers, as I mentioned, because of the build costs, etc. And it does have knock-on effects, but it does seem that somebody in the back end did not code things properly, and now we get infinite alloy generators. The printer goes brrr indeed. Now, what you could do also is essentially change your design a little bit, put the hyperdrive back on, and in that particular case, what you could hypothetically do is, I don't know, send them over to the scrappers. Why the scrappers? Well, if you send a fleet over to the scrappers, they will take it, no matter how they're set up, even if they don't have any guns. Now, the point for the scrappers is, is that other empires will buy ships off the scrappers, which is fine. However... Those ships can be your old ships, which basically means that you can send this ship to the scrappers, get money for it, and then somebody will buy this piece of garbage, whilst you just doubled your alloys. Oh my, indeed. We are getting so many alloys, it is just absolutely ridiculous obviously this type of exploit is going to get fixed very very quickly so if you want to try it out i would suggest you do it now before it is too late thank you so much for watching and if you want to enjoy more solaris overlord content then feel free to give it a subscribe and in the meantime thank you for my patrons and until next time take good care of yourselves and as always keep those alloy printers going